What is up, YouTube? It is Lincoln back with another video. This is episode 9 of the Robin Hood 1K Challenge. If you guys haven't seen the previous videos, I encourage you to go check those out. They are moderately entertaining. We are in the green, just over 5% for the challenge thus far. And this week gets a little wild. I decided to upgrade the video content just a bit, so we got some technical analysis coming. I actually managed to screen capture most of my trades, so stay tuned to check those out, and let's jump into it. So going into this week with the VIX so low, um, not a lot of premium being offered for selling options. I decided I was going to have to get away from Theta Gang type strategies, and so I started to do some old-fashioned technical analysis. So looking at SPY, uh, you can see the RSI. i uh, got some slightly bullish divergents there. And then we'll jump in and look at the price action, which is also bullish. Uh, and then the volume, it has been tapering off, so you can see I'm slightly bearish there. And then the MACD is also slightly bearish as it's losing uh, the buying pressure. So you can see I marked this as slightly bullish for the week, so we'll keep that in mind as a backdrop. Now looking at VIXI. If you guys have seen my recent videos, you'll know that I'm slightly bullish on VIXI overall. I can see the volatility spiking at some point in the near future. Uh, you can see the RSI very slightly bearish. It's basically flat, um, which is positive for me because I kind of saw a nice consolidation range. Uh, price action was showing the same type of thing. It is slightly bearish. It's still going downward, trending downward, um, but it is collecting down there right at $14. Uh, you can see the MACD. It's starting to get bought up a little bit, um, and you're starting to see a little bit more buying pressure. So uh, I was bullish going into this week, and you can see based on my trades that I made that uh, I did take a bullish stance. Now for my good friends over at 3D Systems, you can see the RSI slightly bearish. Um, get some bearish divergence and the price action is obviously bullish it's getting bought up a lot uh, although it does look a bit extended uh, volume slightly bearish again it's tapering off just kinda like SPY was uh, as the price has gotten higher the volume is starting to fall out so that is bearish and then the MACD is also slightly bullish but it does look very extended as well there's been a lot of buying pressure um, so I did take a bearish stance on 3D systems for this week just because of how extended it does look. So at this point I was planning on being long the VIX and short 3D systems and so I wanted to look around for a position that I could get bullish on so I started immediately thinking of value stocks that have been beaten down and something I could kind of get into a contrarian position on um, that would make sense based on my other plays being bearish on the market wanted to find something that could be bullish, so enter ExxonMobil. Uh, you can see RSI I marked slightly bullish, and price action, same thing. It's starting to build up a little bit of momentum. Uh, volume has been steady, and the MACD is flat, so this was something I was feeling slightly bullish on and a good position that I could enter. And given the trades on VIXI and 3D Systems that I was going to be making, I thought this was going to be a good one to enter as well just to give myself some short-term uh, exposure to the upside in case I was wrong on the other plays. And then I was also looking at Triple Q um, just for some tech exposure. I ended up not making a play on Triple Q, but it was a section of the market that uh, I considered taking a, I guess, taking a position in. Uh, you can see the RSI marked as bullish. Uh, again, kind of matched SPY with some bullish divergence. Uh, price action was also pretty solid. Uh, volume was slightly bearish, but pretty good given how high the price actually is. And the MACD was pretty firmly bullish. So I was bullish on uh, Triple Q, but I didn't feel like the premiums offered. I was looking at uh, maybe selling a put credit spread, but the premiums just didn't make sense. So I ended up not making a trade. So let's see what trades I did end up making. So on Monday, I jumped back into 3D systems, but this time I was bearish based on my technical analysis. So I went ahead and got into a $10 by $8 put debit spread. Uh, you can see I did do this for mid-January, so a little ways out. 
and I kind of got screwed by Robinhood uh, because it gave me that price uh, of 70 cents and it was uh, not worth anywhere near that. So I ended up not getting a very good fill and overpaid for that position. But anyway, uh, I also got into ExxonMobil. Like we said, I got into a $40 by $42 uh, call debit spread. And then I wanted to get into this ExxonMobil play just in case I was wrong on uh, where the VIX and the overall market was headed. I wanted to get into a contrarian position that gave me some upside potential, but I figured even if the market went down a little bit this week, uh, ExxonMobil, one of the stocks that's been beaten down a lot and a value play, um, could give me could go up even if the market didn't go up. And I actually lied on my screenshot. Uh, I didn't get into that 39 by 41 called debit spread. So those were the trades I made on Monday. And then I figured I would let my VIX call uh, my $15 strike for mid-January run and not sell anything against that. And that would be uh, a bet on higher volatility and trying to kind of get that spike this week. By Wednesday, uh, the VIX had fallen already a little bit, so I figured I'd make a day trade and jump into that same call that I already had. Um, so I made a quick 10 bucks on that one, and then I ended up selling that ExxonMobil called debit spread. It had run up quite a bit higher, so um, that spread, my max gain was going to be $2, so it had already run up quite a bit towards that, and I thought I was going to get into a different play. Uh, maybe that had a little bit more upside for the rest of the week, but I ended up not doing that. Um, I just didn't find a play that I really liked that much, so instead I did sell uh, a call on that Vixie, which would, um, I guess, kind of give me some exposure to the upside if the market did go back up and my underlying uh, and Vixie started trending down, at least I would collect some premium for that. So that was kind of the play that I decided to make, and then I didn't do anything else for the rest of the week. So just to recap what happened this week, you can see the S&P was down um, just under 1%, which was, I uh, kind of expected it to get a little bit choppy based on where the VIX was looking. Um, so this worked out very well for the positions that I took. Uh, you can see VIXI uh, found its floor and kind of got up over 3.5%. Um, I'm kind of expecting a little bit of a pullback, which is why I ended up selling that $17 strike uh, expiring next Friday. Um, and then 3D Systems did come down high. Uh, off that high, I expected that it was a bit overextended, so I am staying in that put debt of it spread for now. I think it's going to fall a little bit further. And then ExxonMobil did make a huge move this week, so I should have just stayed in that, and uh, I would have taken in the full $2 spread. Um, but um, that is not what I did. So here are the results for the week. Um, you can see I made about 81 bucks. So it was a very good week. I was basically completely accurate on all of my technical analysis that I made on Sunday before the week started. Uh, I should have held on to that ExxonMobil. I ended up not getting into a play to replace it. Um, so I left 22 bucks on the table there. And I sold that Vixi $17 strike instead, which I'm now down 8 bucks. So I could have made uh, another 30 bucks this week, which would have been a massive week. Um, but I cannot complain about the results. Uh, it did work getting away from Theta Gang strategies. Just with the VIX so low, it doesn't really make sense to sell options right now, even though that is my typical strategy. So if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, it really helps out the channel. And subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one.